What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel in another video. Today we are going to be doing a simple flip with one color. So I'm going to be using some titanium white to get some gradients between this thalo blue and all the other blues on the spectrum. So I just, I wanted to do this video because I know when I first started out, I thought you had to have like six or seven colors just to make something beautiful. I wanted to show you that you in fact only need one real color to make something beautiful. All right, so let's start layering the cup. Oh, before we do that, these two colors were mixed two parts pouring medium, the Artist Loft pouring medium, to one part paint. The paint we used was Artist Loft Thalo Blue, and it has two drops of my OGX Coconut Milk Hair Serum in the colors, in blue and white. So we're gonna start off, I wanna start off with a very, very small layer of white. I like showing you how thin I make my layers. I feel like that might even be kind of helpful for you at home. So right now we're just doing layers of white and blue and they're gonna mix a little bit and that's okay. All we need is three ounces of paint for this pour because this is a 10 by 10 canvas. So as you can see, I am just lightly layering the colors. I'm not letting them churn yet. We will get to that once we have a little bit more volume inside this cup. So trying to keep some really stark contrast between the phthalo blue and the white. And now I'm gonna start allowing these colors to churn through each other. You're already seeing cells starting to form in the cup, which is awesome. And you're already seeing that phthalo blue getting brightened up to almost a cerulean blue or a sky blue by letting these colors churn. And then once we get towards the end, I'll, I'll do some deeper puddles where they're not churning so we can have some good deep blues going on throughout. So in the beginning, I was doing easy, soft layers, very thin layers, but I wasn't letting them churn. Then towards the middle of the cup, I let them churn again. And now towards the end of the cup, I am trying to con control those colors punching through each other because I want to create a nice stark color separation in sections of this painting. All right. And there we go, we got our cup layered right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my messy flip thing. And you can see already kind of what we're gonna be looking at when we flip the cup. It's almost like this is our Christmas present and we're gonna be unwrapping it on screen. I can't wait. I'm gonna take some of the extra white that I have just to help it flow a little bit. Cause I mean, I have it and I mixed it up so I might as well use some of it. Uh, typically, the painting has a really hard time getting to the corners. So I'm gonna just give them a little bit of assistance here. So I already know we have enough paint to cover the entire canvas. I'm just using a little extra. There we go. Now I'm gonna take my stick and completely cover these corners here because that's always for me, it's one of the hardest parts for me to actually get good coverage without, you know, pouring extra paint after the pour. But there is a really simple beauty to using just one color. And if you haven't tried it yet, I would suggest you do because you can create some really awesome things with just a single color by letting the colors play with each other and churn throughout each other and then layering them in certain ways. But I encourage you to experiment. So here we go, we're gonna, we're gonna start our flip. I think I wanna flip it on the side that's already kind of growing. And we just let it loose. I'm gonna take some of this blue that was already in the cup and let it drip out in certain sections. 
most of that is going to get covered up and that's okay. I am going to take my heat gun. I have some bubbles, but I also want to develop some cells before I stretch. That way when I do my stretch, those cells get much, much larger. And then after the stretch, the layers are thinned out enough to where I can get even more cells throughout the entire piece. Got some really cool cells growing to the surface right there. All right, now before we spin it, let's see where the weight of our paint is. I kind of want to bring some of that really light blue and dark blue more to the center. All right, I think we're good. And I'm going to spin this bad boy out. Let me move my paint out of the way. Just a light spin. Just enough to get those colors moving. And to get a little bit of that excess paint off of the canvas, because we did use more than three ounces. But would you look at that? Wow. That is beautiful, you guys. Just the mm, colors in these cells. Now I always like to take my heat gun for a second round because it'll help open up some more cells in this, this beautiful piece right here. I'm just doing light passes just to warm up the paint just enough to where I start seeing some of those cells come into the surface. And we already know that the cells are gonna continue to grow, but would you look at those cells, you guys? I love this, wow. This is beautiful, you guys. I can't wait to show it to you. So let's get down there. We're gonna check this thing out. We'll see the wet version and the dry version. All right, so we just finished with the heat. So we have tons of little tiny bullseye cells going throughout. And then they are surrounded by larger cells with really cool gradients of color, really interesting lacing and sharp, really defined lines. Man, I really love what's going on right there. That is so cool. Almost looks like a face upside down. So everything dried really well. And I am very happy with the various shades and hues of blue that have come through after using just thalo blue and white. If you want to watch another video just like this, click the screen right now and I'll see you there.